Greetings and welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss another Schmidt trigger circuit which is now a non-inverting format. We will see how we can calculate the required component values for this specific circuit as shown here and we will also see in the simulations how we can make these graphs for the output waveform. Of course we'll work out everything in the calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. Now before we jump in our example let's first briefly discuss the operation principle of this Schmidt trigger. We will have a positive feedback and the positive feedback in general is given by this circuit. We have here the positive feedback configuration using a simple voltage divider using two resistors. This is our output voltage VO and we have here both inputs grounded. So this is sort of a native circuit where you can put here the input or there your input and then create specific Schmidt trigger circuits. Now you have also here the pictorial view of the stable states. Now we have discussed this also in the previous videos that we have in the positive feedback configuration an amplifier and the loop gain is larger than one. Your amplifier, your circuit can be unstable. But you can make it uh, quasi-stable or put it in a quasi-stable operation if you limit your outputs to a certain amount to certain states. And that's exactly what we want to do and that can be done using this resistor divider where you have the R1 and R2 going from this output node to this positive or the non-inverting input. So this is positive feedback. And you can then establish, create threshold voltages. We will see shortly how that will calculate it. That depends on the resistor values also on the output levels you will have. Now, if you have an output that has two extreme states, we call also that bi stable, so from by two states, so you will have then a bi-stable operation. Okay, now these two states where the ball can go that way or that way, but not on that middle point, that those are the bi-stable states or bi-stable or uh, operation points. Now in our circuit, for this example, we will discuss the non-inverting Schmidt trigger. Again, our positive feedback configuration using this R1 and R2. And you have now here your input. So I just remove this ground node and then put there a input voltage. Now I have my positive feedback and also my non-inverting Schmidt trigger operation. Now you have now several operations. If your input voltage here is positive and is increasing, that will increase this voltage at this V plus node. Now at some point you will have that this is larger, this node larger than that node. So that is actually what's called the threshold voltage high. So then you go actually from the low state, when you reach that threshold, then you go up to the high stage of your circuit at the output. This is by the way the input versus the output characteristics for this first part of the ex expression. You can also have that your input voltage is going down, let's say from some positive value and then it's decreasing and then it's zero and then it becomes negative. Then this node voltage will be also less than zero and it will be less than this non-inverting input, which is in this case always grounded at zero volts. Then you can go down and then it will happen at a different threshold. Now you can combine these two graphs and then put it in here and you already also again see the higher threshold and the lower threshold voltages. Now we will see shortly how we can derive these formulas for the higher and the lower threshold. You can already see the formulas here. We'll see that shortly how we do that. And we'll also have here these two threshold voltages in our diagram. What we created now is not one trigger moment or not one trigger voltage, but two different thresholds. That is done to create a hysteresis to eliminate or avoid repeat triggering in our circuit, as we have discussed that and also in the previous videos. Okay, let's look at our design example. We have this Schmidt trigger circuit. You see that also again here in the positive feedback configuration and one input shown here as a non-inverting Schmidt trigger. We will have an output limit of plus and a minus 10 volts. So the app output will be maximum 10 or minimum minus 10 volts. I would like to design this circuit. So that means we need to determine the values of R1 and R2 such that the lower threshold voltage is minus one volt and the higher threshold voltage is plus one volt. 
Okay, how do we do that? Let's see first the solutions. Before we jump to the actual calculation, we need to make a derivation of the threshold voltages, so the expression we have given in the previous slide. So we will assume now the op amp is ideal, that is what we will do. And we also use the op-amp limits of V max, which is the output of plus 10 and V minimum of minus 10 volts. We will designate the point here, again V plus, and here the V minus, so it will help us in our analysis. And we know, this is always the case, that if the V plus, this node voltage is larger than the V minus, then your op-amp will create here, if there is no negative feedback, that the output will be then going to the positive rail or the positive voltage, which is then the maximum possible output voltage, which is in this case 10 volts, so V max. But if your V plus is less than V minimum, so the V minus, I mean, is larger than this V plus, then if we have the reverse operation, then you go to the most negative state, which is then V minimum. This is important. We will use this later. Now we also know that this is then a point where we can use this, so there is a point we can designate and we can apply here the circuit rules. So we can apply here and then designate here the I1, which is the current through R1, and I2, which is the current through R2. Let's now make the Kirchhoff's current low KCL at this node P. We can say I1 is equal to I2. There is no current flowing in the op-amp, so we can then say safely that I1 is equal to I2, that is because there is ideal op-amp consideration here. Now then we will use the voltage cross this resistor R1 as this VI minus the V plus, as shown here, over R1, is equal to this I2, which is then V plus minus the VO over R2, that is shown here. Now this is a very general formula, now we can simplify this by cross multiplication, that's then shown here, so R2 times this is equal to R1 times this, that's shown here. Now let's also work out the parentheses, so R2 times this one, R2 times that one, again same thing for the R1s here. And then you can now collect the V pluses together, because that's the point where we have the change, so it's important we know an expression for V plus. So we can put this to the right side and then this with a R1 VO to the left side and then flip the equation. This is actually what I do, so I do a couple of steps together, then you have now R1 plus R2 times V plus and then the rest. Now we can now divide everything by R1 plus R2. Then you have your expression in here where you, where you have isolated your V plus. Express that in the terms of VI, which is the input, and the VO, which is our output. And now you also see the ratios of the resistors here, R1 and R2. So what do we do next? Because we like to know when this threshold, low and threshold high, is going to happen. So there must be some expression. Now, if the circuit is in the low state, so we assume that this here load says somehow we manage that, that this is larger, V minus is larger than V plus, so actually the second condition, and we have here R minus 10 volts. So it means VO is minus 10 volts or V minimum in general. Then a negative value for VI here will not change the VO because it will only make this smaller than that one, so we are not going to change the state uh, anyhow. So that means because we need to go above zero, that means we need to change this in the other direction. Now, in order to switch a set, the output to its high state, we require a set here that the V plus is larger than V minus, which is then larger than zero. Okay. Now, thus, the higher threshold voltage can be determined. So, in order to get that threshold voltage high or VTH, we need to say that the input voltage, which is then our threshold voltage, will be then determined by looking at a point where this V plus is zero. So we can now take this equation, make that zero, make that the higher threshold, and make that the V minimum, because we started here at a low stable state. Now, when you now solve this equation, in terms of VTH and V minimum, and the resistor, we can first multiply the left and right hand side, right -hand side by the summation of R1 and R2, then you get this expression, and now we can now express this VTH as shown here. Now, this is also what we have shown in the discussion in the operation principle. Now, you see here now exactly minus R1 over R2 times the V minimum. This is now the higher threshold voltage expression. Now, in a similar form, we can say now, for example, we assume that our output voltage is in the high stable state. So, VO is V maximum. So, somehow, this V plus 
is larger than V minus, so we have here plus 10 volts. Now, a positive value, so increasing our input voltage will not change the state because this will only make this larger, so it is always larger than that zero volts because the V minus is set to zero. So we're not going to change that. So that means we are starting with this VO of V max and VI is now here positive. Okay. Now in order to switch, so in order to go back to our state, which is then low stable state at the output, we require, as shown here, the second condition. Okay. So the lower threshold voltage, VTL, can be determined actually using this formula again and substitute again here zero. Here the VTL, because that is where we work towards. And then VO is our V max, which is our high stable state. So a very similar expression as before. Now we only change the VI and the VO to the VTL and V max. This should be always zero because there is, that is the point where we have to change. Because if this is larger than zero, that means output is high. If this is smaller than zero, that means output is low. That is in not sure what happens. Now, when we can, we can multiply the left and the right side by the summation of R1 and R2. That's shown here. And now we have an expression for the lower threshold voltage. Now you see these are very similar. The only change is really Vmax and the V minimum. Okay. Let's take now these two equations here for our lower and higher threshold voltages and then start the calculation because we want to have the minus one and the plus one for our threshold voltages. So how do we do that? Now, in this case, we will use the operational amplifier TL081, which is our OP01 here. So we will select the actual model of an operational amplifier we can use in the in real time. And the old output limit should be then plus or minus 10 volts. We will see shortly what we need to do with the power supply of this op-amp in order to get that exactly or very close to that plus and minus 10 volts. So lower threshold voltage, we start with that one. That means VTL must be, of course, using this formula. But we need to have here minus one and we need to have here plus 10 volts. We will do that shortly. Let's also do the higher threshold voltage expression. Now this left side must be minus one. Now here, see here, minus R1 over R2 times the 10. Now, if you now also do the same thing here, it will be then one is equal to minus R1 over R2 times the minus 10 here. What do we do next? Now, we can now make an expression for the ratio of R1 over R2, which is just because these two minus sign will cancel each other out, it will be just one over 10. But I also have the same here, one over 10 for R1 and R2. So I see here R1 and R2 are related by this ratio, say R2 is actually in this case 10 times larger than R1. Since we have two unknowns and only one equation actually because we set the two expressions using these formulas, but we only get again one equation, but two unknowns, so we need to select a value for one of the unknowns in order to proceed. Now I will do again the same selection as before, so I will select just for R1 here 1 kilo ohm, just convenient, you can also take of course a different value, it doesn't matter. Then you have an R2, which is then 10 times this R1, which is then in this case 10 kilo ohms. So if you take here 2 kilo ohms, it will be then 20. That's actually what will happen. Now we have our values for R1 and R2. And we have here again our input versus output characteristics. Again, our minimum, which is then minus 10. Maximum output, which is then plus 10. And we have here the minus, or I mean the plus 1 volts VTH and minus 1 volts, which is VTL. Let's see now the simulation results. This is the circuit. You see here the R1 and R2, one kilo and 10 kilo. You see our input voltage, the operation amplifier we have the chosen, which is our TL081. And I have here different power supplies, or not 10 and a minus 10 volt. I have here 11.6 and here minus 11.6 because it's the flipped DC voltage source. Now why do I do that? I do that because I know, or I have seen that the op amp itself by the model will also consume some voltage so we will lose some voltage here in both rails both directions so we'll lose in this case approximately 1.6 volts in both directions that means i need to go above this 10 volts in order to get exactly or very close to 10 volts otherwise if i do here 10 volts and minus 10 volts i probably get maybe 8.5 or 8.4 volts so not what i want so i need to go a little bit up now you see here now the plot, which you see here the red one, which is our input voltage, which is now in this case triangle, has a voltage of 2 volts peak, 
and which in this case uh, 100 hertz not really inter interesting actually for the simulation and you also see that the output voltage is given in blue now what you also see is here the output levels are for the blue one is maximum 10.04 volts and minimum minus 10.04 volts so that is pretty close to what we wanted which is 10 and a minus 10 volts so we can say this is perfectly fine for practical purposes we also see here the lower threshold why is it a lower threshold let me explain that because this is the high state of our output of our circuit which is now in this case almost 10 volts and when I reach when we reach this minus one with the red curve which is our input then the high state will go all the way to the low stage and that is actually exactly what happened so this is a non inverse trigger and when I reach my higher threshold voltage which is now in this case plus one volts you can also see that from the graph here when you go vertical then this goes from the low stage to high stage so it is exactly doing what should be done now we see here the lower and the higher threshold voltages in summary so we can say it is indeed as expected and we also need to adjust the power supply for our op amp to get very close to the vmax and minimum what we wanted so we can say we have achieved our goal so design is completed all right that's our example considering the non-inverting schmidt trigger circuit we have discussed how we can determine the expression for the threshold voltage formulas and we also have calculated the required component values R1 and R2 for this circuit and finally we have checked our result using the Tina Ti SPICE circuit and also adjusted here the power supply for the op-amp to compensate for the losses in the op-amp itself if you have any questions comments about this circuit and example please let me know I will try to answer them as soon as possible there are more examples about operational amplifier circuits or many other different electronics in on this channel so you can uh, browse through it and if you want to learn more about it so you can also look through that and ask questions if you need more assistance don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video